Hi everyone, so I've got another video on vegetables for you today and what I have in front of me is chard. <laughs> so I actually have a Swiss or green chard but you can get different sorts of chard. Um, you can get the uh, ones with red stem which is the ruby chard or with different coloured leaves which is rainbow chard. Um, so as you can see the, the Swiss or green chard has these really um, thick white stems and then this really nice dark green leaves um, and chard is actually in the same family as spinach so it's a really nutritious vegetable and I'm going to kind of talk through some of its properties that um, are important for us to know about when we're feeding it to our guinea pigs um, and how often we might want to feed it to them. As you can see I'm going to bring the piggies out, I've got a little bit prepared for them there so they're going to have a taste of it. They have tried it earlier this week um, and I don't know whether they were that keen on it really so it might be a bit of a different reaction to some of my other vegetable videos. So it would be really interesting to hear what you think of chard and whether you feed it to your guinea pigs because I have found some conflicting advice on the internet and uh, a few things that surprised me um, and kind of made me reconsider what other vegetables I might be feeding my guinea pigs. So hopefully this video will give you some um, useful information about their diet. So I'm just going to get the girlies out and they are going to hopefully sit still and uh, maybe munch on some of that chard if they want to. So here are the piggies, they're having a good sniff, they can smell something that they're interested in. Just going to pop it in front of them. <laughs> and then they're diving in and munching on some of that, so uh, let's see how long it'll last them. Um, so, when we are thinking about chard, <laughs> some of the uh, things that we need to consider about all vegetables when we're feeding them to our guinea pigs is uh, the amount of vitamin C they have, um, their calcium to phosphorus ratio and um, we also should consider whether they're high in oxalates or not. So I'm just going to kind of explain through those things and hopefully it'll be easy for you to understand. Uh, it can get a bit technical and uh, a lot of, uh, especially the stuff to do with calcium and oxalates, um, quite a bit of research is still required really um, and we don't know the exact effects that it can have and the risk factors when we're thinking about uh, bladder and kidney stones for example. So first things first, in general chard is really really good, it's really nutritious vegetable, um, it's second to spinach as like one of the most nutritious vegetables we have. So first things first, like spinach, uh, chard is good for vitamin C, so it's got a kind of medium to high amount of vitamin C in it. Uh, on Guinea Lynx's nutrition charts it's 30 milligrams per 100 grams and it rates about number 24 out of uh, 70 or so vegetables that they've got listed on there. So it is got, has got a reasonably high amount of vitamin C which is good because guinea pigs can't produce their own vitamin C so we need to supplement their diet with it. Um, however unlike spinach it's got uh, on the lower range of the calcium to phosphorus ratio and it's actually a lot closer to the recommended ratio for guinea pigs than spinach is. So spinach has a really offset ratio, a lot of calcium compared to phosphorus, whereas chard is 1.1 to 1 and it's uh, only two points off what it should be. We're looking for a 1.3 to 1 calcium to phosphorus ratio. So that means um, that there's not that much free calcium which can kind of go around their bodies and form um, bladder stones and those calcium carbonate stones which is the most um, common form of stone that uh, occurs in guinea pigs. So just looking at that ratio I was actually surprised and thinking oh well surely that means we can feed it quite often but then something that we also need to consider is the amount of oxalates and oxalates can cause a different kind of bladder or kidney stone in guinea pigs. Now they're not as common in guinea pigs um, as the other type of stones so it's a bit of a grey area whether plants that are high in oxalates should be fed or not and chard is high in these oxalates so it's something that we might want to think about and uh, I definitely recommend if you're interested in it doing a bit of research and if you do come across any interesting articles or papers or anything then do feel free to share them. I'm going to put some links in the description if anyone one's interested and they want to read about what research has already been done. So chard is high in oxalates along with things like spinach, same family, kale, uh, celery and beets or beetroot. Um, and one of the things that is important about oxalates is it's a lot higher content in the leaves than it is the stem. 
and that's one of the reasons why it's always a no-no to feed celery leaves but now that I also know celery is quite high in it in general um, maybe I shouldn't be feeding celery as much as I do now so that's uh, something which I kind of learnt from my research so for me, I wouldn't choose to feed chard that often and when I do feed it, I'm only going to feed the stem part of the leaves and not the kind of leafy green part because um, that contains higher oxalates. Um, they had a few bits in, in their little pile of uh, veg here but not really enough. Uh, I threw most of the leafy part away. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I know I kind of got a bit technical talking about the calcium and the phosphorus and the, the oxalates but the main thing is to remember um, you can look up the calcium to phosphorus ratio on the uh, guinea links, the recommended amount, and you can also see um, what we think uh, the ratios are for a, a whole load of vegetables. So if you are w worried about excess calcium and bladder stones, uh, guinea links is a really good site to go on. So there's thinking about the calcium to phosphorus ratio and also just being aware of those vegetables like chard that are high in oxalates, which can cause a different kind of bladder or kidney stone. I think Annie's uh, going on a wonder about. <laughs> Annie has just found the rest of the chard. <laughs> I'm going to take it away from her because I don't want her eating too much of it. Peggy, you do seem to like it. But I'm going to take it away from you. And plus we want to eat this. It's for us humans. <laughs> She's wondering where it's gone now. <laughs> oh, sorry Piggy. Are you going to get in a strop and destroy your cuddle cup now? <laughs> But she's off. You meant to come out the front, not just uh, trample over everything. Yay! <laughs> so I think that's everything I've got to say for this video. Um, if you do have chard a lot and you do have it in, I wouldn't feed them it, uh, I wouldn't really have it as a regular vegetable um, given that it is high in these oxalates. Um, I'd kind of, if you do have it in and maybe you'll only have it in occasionally, feed it maybe twice a week at most. Um, I rarely, rarely buy chard, um, but if I do have it in, I will give them a bit just for a bit of extra variety but I wouldn't really keep buying it for them and keep giving it to them as a regular kind of uh, vegetable in their diet. So the piggies have been very good and I hope you've learned something from this video. Oh what are you doing Annie? She won't like you doing that. <laughs> are you stepping all over my chopping board? Yes. Naughty piggy. <laughs> anyway I'm rambling now so I'm going to say bye so thank you all for watching and if you've enjoyed the video please leave a comment, uh, rate and subscribe. So thank you for watching, goodbye!